So we left off in the last video where we had this working and it was trying to run the jobs defined in the Jenkins file, but of course it failed and we can see where it failed in this build script. So it's trying to use the AWS S3 command to get an environment file for the Laravel application. And then it tries to put that inside of the container, but I don't have AWS installed on the server. And we can see it's trying to use that in a specific location, varlib Jenkins, a virtual environment, which is a Python specific virtual environment. And it's trying to use the AWS command. So I need to install that and I need to set up a local Docker registry to put the Docker image when it's done building. Now you don't see that here, but I just know that that's one of the steps. So if we check that out here, I'll go to Docker and the build script, we'll see it's gonna use AWS here. And down here, it tries to build and push to localhost port 5000 where a local Docker registry exists. So I just have to do those two things to get this to finish building. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that real quick. I'm gonna see which Python, and I don't have Python, so I'm gonna do sudo apt get update and sudo apt get install dash y python and i know i'm going to need python pip as well because i'm going to use the pip package manager to install the aws command line tool okay so those are finished installing we'll see i have python at some version probably 2.7 yep and i can do which pip and see we have that so i'll do again sudo pip install dash u dash u will update but it's already installed so i can actually update pip just to get the latest pip which we might not have and I also want to get virtual environment to virtual env so I can create that virtual env in the location that it is expecting. So that location was the Jenkins home directory. So I'm going to sudo su, whoops, I'm going to sudo su to the user Jenkins. Okay, and I'll head to the Jenkins um, user directory, varlib Jenkins. I'm going to do virtual env and I'm going to create a virtual environment in the directory dot venv where it is expected to be by our script. Okay, so I'll source that to enable this virtual environment. Oops, user bin activate. And then I can do pip install AWS CLI and it will install that tool within the virtual environment that we have created here. Okay, so which AWS? We can see AWS, the binary exists exactly in that location that we saw in the script that was expecting it. Cool, okay. So um, this will run a script like AWS S3 and actually we can copy this just to make sure our server has access to that S3 bucket and it did download it successfully. And I'll just remove the .m file since it shouldn't actually exist here. Okay, so now it has access to do that. It can download it from S3. It should be able to get past that step. The last thing I'm gonna do here is head back to the user Ubuntu and I'm going to start up a Docker registry just because I know I'm gonna need that in my script as well. So sudo docker run dash D to push it to the background, it detaches it. Port, I'm gonna expose port 5000 on the host system and tell it to go to port 5000 inside of the registry container. I'm gonna name it registry and then I'm gonna grab the image registry at version two, which is the latest Docker private registry. Now I do a little bit more of a complicated setup inside of my production Jenkins instance because it uses AWS S3 and S3 bucket as a storage location for my Docker images. Here, I'm not gonna do that because I just want it to go locally. And it's a little bit easier for this demonstration, but we can see that'll be up and running. I can curl localhost at port, oops, 5000. And I believe the URL is v2 and underscore catalog. And we can see I have no repositories in it, but that is the catalog of repositories inside of this instance. After we run this script again, we tell Jenkins to try to rebuild it. It'll run through the um, Jenkins pipeline, the build script we have, and it'll push to this local repository when it's finished. So I'm just gonna kick that off and we should be able to see that work this time. So I'll hit this button to refresh it. It's gonna start a new build. I'll open it and we can see it's just gonna keep going. So I'm gonna pause the video here and when it finishes, we'll cover what it did. All right, so this is just about finished. It's actually running the last steps here. We can see we had the build steps. The test steps, which is just one here, it runs PHP unit and everything pass. And then the packaging steps, which are two scripts here. This is the cleanup one on the bottom. On the top here, we have a longer one where it does Docker build, the shell script that I showed you a minute ago that does the AWS and pushes to the Docker private registry. And then we just have all the output from that stuff. Okay, great. So let's actually head back over here and I'm gonna do this curl request again. And we do see this time we have a shipping Docker repository because that build script pushed up my image, my production image, to the Docker private registry. Okay, great, so this is actually building now. 
One last bit of setup I need to show you here is something that I'm not sure if it's a bug or not, but inside of the shipping Docker organization, I have settings and then we have webhooks. I have a webhook here and this is for my production Jenkins instance that I actually use. And this gets set up automatically through Jenkins. Now the documentation for the GitHub organization pipeline plugin says that this will set it up automatically if that token we gave it has access to do it, has the proper API access. Now I gave our token proper access to do that, but it didn't set up a webhook. So what I'm gonna do here is set that up manually. So if I head on over to EC2 here, we have our server and I'll grab the IP address for that. And I'm gonna open this one to see what settings it has. I'm gonna add a webhook here as well. So that'll be HTTP, oops, not S. I don't have an SSL certificate, but I need the IP address there. And it's gonna be the same URL here, GitHub webhook. We have the webhook settings set to let me select individual events, and it's just push and repository. Now it, it should be able to do pull requests as well. So I'm actually gonna open that and see if that works. So we'll add the webhook, we'll edit it, and let's see if I can send a test. All right, so we have a recent delivery, and that recent delivery of the test webhook was successfully sent. Great, we'll close that. We have the webhook set up in theory here for the organization, and we can see if that works, hopefully. Okay, so this is a token change. I had actually tested this out on my production Jenkins instance, not the test instance here, but that is the last commit in my repository. So I'm actually gonna make one more token change and we'll see if that works. So I'll go to sites, shippingdocker.com. I'm gonna edit the readme file. And the last line here, I'm just gonna delete that and add that and get a uh, commit with a message. Yet another token change. I'll do git push. Uh, SD master, so usually you have origin, but I named it shipping docker here. I'm gonna push to that. Now this is actually gonna send both to my production Jenkins and the second Jenkins that I have set up. So um, let's head on over to EC2 here and I'm just gonna search for Jenkins. We'll see I have two servers. This is my production one and this is the blue ocean one that we're using as a test here. I'll refresh this, I'm gonna edit both of these and we should see, okay, so this actually sent out a second webhook for the push we just made, that's good. And this also just sent out one as well to the production one. So let's actually check that out. Um, we have our blue ocean one here and we can see that this is working, right? So that webhook got sent and now it's automatically pushing the second build. And if I actually head on over to my production one, I think I'll see a concurrent build there. All right, so this um, by default is not the Blue Ocean interface, so we can actually see the regular Jenkins interface here. And we can see this is what it looks like without the Blue Ocean stuff. It's really not too bad, but the Blue Ocean one is much nicer to look at. All right, so this is building again. So yet another token change is building here as well. Now this is pretty interesting. This one failed and this one over here did not fail. So I think what we have here is just a weird artifact. The unit test here passed. But over here they did not. And we can see we have a failure here and that is on my straight payment and expected matches equals two equals one. I have a feeling this is an artifact just based on the fact that this specific test is an integration test that actually talks to the Stripe API. The important thing here is that we saw we set up a webhook and it got uh, sent here and then the test ran, so that's good. But I'm gonna actually refresh this and tell it to run a second time and I want to see if it um, fails a second time to see if we have a real issue here that comes up over, over and over again. Because in my production instance, we see that this just passed. All right, we're great. We see the second time the tests have actually passed. Okay, so we're all done here. The only thing I've done here is set up Jenkins to work with my specific use case. So my Jenkins file, and I'll head back over here to see it, uses Docker Compose to spin up the Docker containers, and then it grabs a environment file from S3. If I'm testing, I just generate a, a key, so that changes every time. And then it goes to the test stage where it runs my unit tests, and then if I'm in the master branch, it packages it up. All of this requires some special setup for me. One, I had to install Docker on the server. Two, I had to get this AWS tool there and give it access to that S3 bucket. And then three, I have it run the Docker build script, which inside of it talks to a Docker private registry at local support 5000. So I just had to set that up to get my build on Jenkins working. What you have to do will be a little bit separate. And it depends on what you want to test or do inside of your Jenkins file here, or what you want your pipeline to do in each stage. The one last point I wanna talk about here in this video is that we noticed that I had to install and set up all this stuff directly on the Jenkins server and usually as user Jenkins. 
This is because the Jenkins server just runs any of your jobs as shell scripts as user Jenkins just directly on the server. There's no sandbox that puts it in or anything. Now I run a lot of the stuff in Docker, so it's sort of sandboxed in that way and that it's running my steps inside of Docker containers for the most part. And that's why I like to use Docker with Jenkins. It's really a nice way to segment your jobs into a little container and then just get rid of that container when you're done. Now in the next video, I'm gonna cover the Jenkins file a little bit more. I just want to show a more simple setup here that is not Docker-based that you might want to try out as well.